That's fantastic. Now, Tony, uh, Tony, I was rather, I want to speak about Tony Ferguson. Now, <clears throat> I know that Tony trains with you and, and you're in his corner and all that goes with that. I'm a huge fan of Tony's. I love watching him fight. I'm bummed. He's uh, not able to do this fight. If I'm incorrect, please tell me with Frankie Edgar. They brought in uh, a friend of mine who I really, really like as a fighter and a great jiu-jitsu artist from what I can see is Brian Ortega. So now, I think Brian Ortega, guys, is a very, as Tony would have been, of course, is an extremely tough opponent for Frankie Edgar, who's a tough opponent for anybody. So I'm bummed that Tony's out. But, uh, no, excuse me, wait a minute, what am I saying? Help me out, TJ, I'm wrong on this. Yeah, no, Tony, what upon- Tony Ferguson is fighting Habib Nurmagomedov. Uh, Habib. And, yeah, uh, so I'm it, really it, excited about right. that. i got to re- restate this, I was looking at the wrong things. What? Who backed out of the fight with Frankie Edgar? Who, who was out of that one? Uh, I believe it was Max Holloway. Max Holloway, excuse me, I knew I screwed up on this. So now we go back, because now I see where I screwed up on my paperwork here. Eddie, Tony's fight with Habib who a lot of people consider, you know, invincible. You and I both know that everybody is is breakable in MMA. It's going to be hard to ever find somebody who's going to hold an undefeated title throughout their career because of the nature and the beauty and the difficulty of our great sport. So with this fight with Tony and Habib, are you going to change any kind of training techniques with Tony as far as how he's going to approach this fight with this monster warrior from, you know, from uh, Russia? No, it's, Every fight camp, we're basically doing the same thing we would do for Nurga Khabib. Basically, we're doing the same thing every fight. So the, the fight camp really doesn't change. Um, the strategy doesn't change. See, with, with Khabib, everybody is um, running from him on the ground. They're, like, trying to get away. They're trying to drag themselves back up. They're trying to lean, lean up against the fence. And, and, and he's very good at just riding people who are trying to get away. Um, Tony's not going to ride him or, or Tony's not going to uh, run away from him. He's going to face him. He's going to go forward. So it's going to be a little bit different than Khabib's used to. Khabib's used to guys just surviving and not attacking and trying to drag themselves away to safety back on their feet. Uh, that's not going to happen with Tony. He's, he's going to attack. It's going to be different angles. He's going to go after him. And I can see that. How is Tony feeling after his recent movie release with um, the movie he was out in? Tony was in a movie. Yeah, was it Tony in a movie? With uh, with uh, oh God, the, the guy. I mean, maybe my notes are all screwed up here. Three hundred Spartans, the the star of Three Hundred Spartans comes to the UFCs a lot. TJ, help me out. I know you're not a movie guy. Uh, yeah, I'm not a movie guy. I don't know what you're talking about. It was either Tony or here I go. I screwed up again. I'm back to the. I've got my names all mixed up. It was Holloway. Holloway was in the movie. Uh, all right, let let's go back to that. <laughs> all right. I, I'm I'm jet lag, guys. I just got back from Australia, and I got to admit to you, the second day after you come back from Australia is the day it usually hits you. So I think my brain got a little brain farted there for a couple of moments. No more mistakes for the rest of the show. Hey, you're, let's you're, go back. You're, you're just mixing up one great champion with another. So, well, yeah, but with respect to both, they should each stand on their own great champion diocese, and that's how I like to treat them. So, with all respect, let's go back to Brian Ortega. Brian Ortega is a really tough opponent for Frankie Edgar. Brian Ortega is. A fantastic jujitsu artist, if I'm not mistaken, Eddie, from what I understand and what I've seen and what I've talked to Brian about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, One of the best finishers in the UFC today. Absolutely. And I admire him, too, because being a surfer, you know, since my whole life and Brian, all he does, he loves to surf. He loves to fight. He loves to win and get back in the water. He is one of the most humblest down to earth people I've ever met. This is a very, very tough fight for Frankie, as Frankie is a tough fight for Brian. Guys, I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited about this fight, even though Holloway pulled out. So how do you see this fight? How do you see Ortega and Edgar? Man, that's hard, that's hard to call. I mean, it, they're both amazing fighters. Uh, Frankie Edgar is definitely going to be in the UFC Hall of Fame. Uh, he's not done yet. He's, like, better than ever now. Yeah. Um, man, but, Bri- but Brian Ortega has some of the best submissions in the game today. He, if you let him around your neck, man, he's a closer. Not too many closers out there like Brian Ortega. So uh, Frankie Edgar, I'm sure, is going to be very hard to submit. It's really hard to call. It's a toss-up. You know, I'm always going for the jiu-jitsu guy. So, you know, you know, um, on paper, maybe you'd go with Frankie Edgar. Uh, but, um, you know, you just can't tell. Anything could happen. Yeah, and also, too, Frankie is so good at movement. He's also very good as a boxer, and his hands are hard to get past. 
So he's not going to stand still. He's not going to stand in front of you. He's going to be moving left, right, planting, moving, shoving, kicking, and punching. So we'll see how that goes. Speaking about jiu-jitsu, I wanted to tell you that my two boys, uh, first off with Rupert, my 10-year-old, he's now training. I got him over to Cron Gracie's uh, gym here in Playa Vista, down near the coast over here. They got a really nice, nice dojo. Yeah, very nice. And he's only 10, but he's tall. He's 5'3". And he's a little warrior. I, you know, I've been working with him at striking and stuff. But he stepped right into the 13 to 16-year-old class for his very first class, showed confidence. And now I have him training with the 13 to 16-year-olds at 10 years old. And I don't see anything wrong with that, do you, Eddie, if he's willing to do it? He's willing to learn from scratch? Not at all. If he's into okay. it, yeah, more power to him. Good, good, good. Thanks, hey, buddy. If you don't mind here, I got a, a question to jump in kind of on that, that tip of, you know, young young kids and, and the next generation of jujitsu. Uh, we we haven't seen her very much lately, uh, Eddie. But what what's the latest on on Grace Gundrum and and how's her progression? Because as far as the next generation of jujitsu goes, she is one that everyone needs to keep their eye out on. Yeah, Grace Gundrum has got a super fight at the next On It Invitational. Not too sure on the date, but I think it's On It Seven. On It Invitational Seven. She's got a super fight, and, um, you know, as soon as she turns 18, she'll be back in the EBI, you know. As soon as, as soon as that happens, you know, Grace will be back on the main, on the main stage. Yeah, and she's truly a, a, a prodigy. That, that word gets thrown around a lot in combat sports, but uh, her jiu-jitsu game and the way that she's, uh, you know, developing it as, you know, she grows up, you know, the, the, it, it's interesting. Joe Rogan always brings up, uh, you know, athletes growing up practicing jiu-jitsu and, and combat sports their their body uh evolves with it and uh you can tell that the flexibility and the technique from grace gundrum is something that i don't think you can really even uh, develop later in life it's something you have to experience as a child as your body is growing yeah she literally trains jiu-jitsu all day like she's at the gym all day she wow. that she doesn't have any friends she's homeschooled uh she she's just um she's a little girl uh uh, she's um, a like a old wise martial artist trapped inside of a little girl's body. She she is uh, amazing. She really is. She's amazing. Race sounds like a very 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 focused individual. That's for sure. Guys, did you watch the UFC 221 show last uh, weekend? Of course, yeah, I did. And did you? Eddie? I actually missed it. I missed it, but I saw the knockout of Luke Rockhold. I saw that. Yeah, the knockout was brutal uh, of Luke. Uh, Curtis Blades uh, threw Mark around, which is very hard to do. Like, I don't want to say, well, I have to say it. I'm like a rag doll. I think he dropped him down on the ground about eight times, give or take, uh, and played a different game to take out Mark even after the first round where he was getting the, you know, the punches thrown at him. Uh, but there was a star that I saw in the making here, uh, this tie to Ivasa, who fought Cyril Asker. Now, this guy looks like Mark Hunt, taller, 265 pounds, just an absolute bruiser. But his hands and the combinations of body and head blows he was throwing, TJ, you saw it. I, I can't wait to see this monster fight again. And from what I'm seeing, I have no idea about if he has any kind of a ground game whatsoever. Um, obviously, seems like a very tough individual to, t individual to take down, especially if he has a sprawl at the size that he is. But were you impressed with what you saw? Oh, TJ? yeah, yeah. And I was also impressed with the way he handled himself in his post-fight interview. And uh, uh, he, uh, he's only 24 years old, a lot of skills that he has yet to develop. But uh, a true athlete and uh, someone who hits very hard. And, and apparently he likes to party a little bit, and that was on display when he uh, was chugging a beer out of someone's uh, shell-toed Adida. Yeah, which was <laughs> that was definitely something to be seen. And I billed him and announced him as a street fighter. And I could see this guy. Obviously, he looks like a guy that's had a lot of backyard brawls. So backyard alley, you name it. Very tough individual. Another one that really shined on me huge, who I think is a future superstar, unless I'm missing something, is Israel Adesanya. Um, I couldn't help but think of John Jones looking at him, his length, his body length, the way he handled himself. Um, there's some personality or a lot of personality there waiting to get out. The USC is developing some very good new stars. I am going to predict that this gentleman is going to be a future superstar in the UFC. All right. We'll mark it down. We'll come back to this moment. Mark it down. Now, another prediction I made, we can all talk about, I said months ago or rather a few months ago that we would hear in the next 18 or six to 18 months that Chuck Liddell is going to be coming back and fighting again. Obviously, if he does, we'll probably be in Bellator. 
Um, now it seems that with his uh, showing on Big Brother, the TV show, uh, a couple articles I've read recently, Chuck is talking about the fact that he's totally open and serious about taking another MMA fight. Question, Eddie, we both know Chuck very well, okay, over the years. Do you, A, two, two questions, would you like to see Chuck come back in the octagon, A, B, how do you feel about him stepping back in, taking the money for one fight, maybe a couple fights after that? You know, everybody knows the danger of fighting and the brain trauma and all that. Everybody knows that. Um, he knows that. Everybody knows that. But the sport is dangerous. That's why the, there's so much glory in it, because it is dangerous. Um, if he wants to do it, I'm sure, you know, um, he, he's aware of the, the dangers. Uh, if he wants to do it, I'll watch it. I'm going to for sure watch it. So, oh. uh, uh, yeah, I'm not... Um, I'm not uh, uh, against his decision. I'm for mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I'm for it, too. I mean, if he medically clears, he wants to go in, depending who the matchup is. Obviously, I would love to see him fight Tito, and I, and I think that would be a huge draw, but I think Tito's completely done with MMA and doing very well in his post-fight career, uh, from what I understand. Um, but, yeah, it all depends on who he faces. I don't want to see him thrown to the Lions. I'd want to see him in a good fight. Why? Because I just love watching Chuck Goodell fight. I love his persona from the moment he steps out of the door to the arena to the moment he steps in and out of the octagon, in this case, wherever he will fight. So Chuck's a friend. I wish him the best. I don't want to see any injuries. And I think he's smart enough to determine after his first fight, if he does done one, does do one, rather, uh, whether or not he wishes to continue. But I'm sure he'll get some big money. I you know, don't want to guesstimate, but I would hope it's a minimum of a half million to a million dollars for him to step back in, an absolute minimum. Otherwise, I don't see why to do it. 